I'm your host, DJ Fat Tony, and today's guest is a certified fashion legend. Regarded as the most influential milliner of the 21st century, he crafted creations from today's greatest couturiers, including John Galliano, Kim Jones, and Vivian Westwood. One of the original Blitz kids, he's gone from wild nights out with Steve Strange and Lee Bowery to becoming the choice hat maker for global pop stars like Celine Dion and Kylie Minogue, and Rihanna, to name a few. It's just the one, the only, Stephen Jones. Hi, DJ Fat Tony here, and welcome to Fashion Radio on Show Studio. And this week's guest is a megastar within the world of fashion. And when it comes to all things hats, all things hats, there's only one name on the top of everybody's tongue, and that is Stephen Jones. And you know what? This is a kind of one of those moments that I've wanted to for so long to have you here. Well, thank you. It's a delight to be here. And it it's great to see you again. I mean, whenever I see you, you're always behind a DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> you know and the music's blaring out and we don't have a chance to chat. After all of these years. After all of these years. Still though, doing I, it. We were saying just before, so I knew you first when you were 14. That's right, yeah. But when I see you, your family. Yeah. You know, we grew I, up together. We and did. there's so many of us who are no longer around and... We're the lucky ones. We come from, but we also come from that magical era. Yeah, pre, pre social media, pre in the palm of the hand. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Four hundred years ago. Yeah, but you know what? We're <laughs> blessed, like and and you are right. We are the ones that are still here, and we're here for a reason. Yeah. Let's start with the Central St. Mines thing, and let's start with your clubbing history because I truly believe, right. And I'm not wrong, right? If you see me in the street, you can add an argument with me about it. But I truly believe the best people that are still around and still at the masters of their game, right, come from a clubbing history. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, going to clubs, for example, when I was at St. Martin's, uh, people in my year weren't really going to clubs. Mm. I mean, the clubs that existed were there were a few, two or three gate pubs yeah that was it there weren't really any gay clubs at all apart from like shagarama something and yeah ones like that which is slightly a generation before but i mean club life modern club life as we know it now really was invented by rusty and steve and you know and that's you, rusty you, Eagle and steve strange 100 percent. i agree i mean you, you you tend to think oh well it's always come from something somebody else or you know it's like fashion it's you know who who did an asymmetric bow oh well you know was, <laughs> it, was it john no was it chanel was it worth but really rusty and steve invented that because nobody had done a one-nighter before as i always say you know from that era and and the the, the, the preceding 10 years people had to find their own platform oh god yeah because it didn't exist that was the thing it wasn't that we were doing something that was really out there we were doing the only thing we could do because anything which went before was no longer relevant i mean you know before it was like yes and stadium rock yeah and oh yeah well we so yeah. we love queen yeah of course but it was absolutely nothing to do with us so we could see that and we wanted to do our own thing nothing i mean you know existed I, seemed to be right i mean at, at that time the gay scene it, 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 around the world i was going to say in london but it's around the world was primarily based around clones. It was oh, yeah. based around bleached crutch jeans, yeah. red hand, oh, red hankies. I went straight to the red, uh, but you know, hankies and moustaches and vests. Yeah. You know, you mentioned you tipped on the Queen front. Freddie was a massive, massive, a massive clone. He was yeah. a part of that yeah. movement. Yeah. That was how gay men identified. So when all these kids come along wearing women's clothes and, and outfits and dressing up the way they wanted to be and to be themselves. It was mind-blowing. Yeah. And also, I mean, as far as clones are concerned, when I was growing up, that was something that we really did not want to be. Exactly. We wanted to find something new because we just felt, I mean, either it was clones or Euro gays, we used to call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they were Euro gays. Yeah. You, you know, but it was just, they were a tribe within themselves. And yeah. I really want to talk to you about tribes. You know, we were growing up in London and it, it, it was such an alien world. And suddenly there was like-minded people. And it was amazing that Steve understood that, recognised that and let people in. And we all looked after each other. Mm. Um, so if 
John Maybe, for example, was having a film opening, or or, or Kareth Wynn Evans. Yeah, you know, Kareth, we, bless. We, we would all turn up because yeah. we felt it was sort of our duty. Yeah. You know, Spandau Ballet was playing somewhere. We would go because yeah, not only because we were interested, because it was what we were supposed to do. Yeah, I remember when, you know, I was talking the other day because, you know, Grayson just got knighted, which is it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's Grayson Perry getting a knighthood, right? Dame Grayson Perry. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's insane. And it's, and it, and, I was talking about when I first met Grayson, and Grayson was actually a neo naturist with Binny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all lived in Mornet and Crescent, yeah. as we well know. And I was on the same circuit with them. We're doing my drag act, Dying a Dog. They were doing neo naturism. Yeah. And everyone came. And, and it was like someone, when I was doing an interview, that people were like, why did people come and watch your drag show? I said, because it's exactly the same reason. People came because they supported each other. Yeah, totally. It wasn't a matter of me having to fly over everyone and go, oh, please come to us. People turned up because they were there in support because we were a part of a, a, a really big family. Yeah. So, and I lived just down the road in Godwin Court. That's and right. I shared a flat, flat with uh, Jeffrey Hinton and Lee Sheldrick and Princess Julia. Oh, bless Lee Sheldrick. Uh, Too funny. Yeah. You know, those times, and you know, the thing about it is those names you just mentioned all and everyone we're talking about are still relevant today. Completely. I mean, Julia is this <laughs> superstar of club scene around the world yeah. that she was not then. I mean, no. her career has grown and grown and grown and grown. That's not by luck as again. It's, mm-hmm. it's for a reason because mm-hmm. Julia is not afraid of putting herself out there and, and yeah. her looks and the way she is and the way she's always been. Oh, yeah. It's Completely. got a lot to do with the way she is now because people, you know what you're going to get with Princess Julia. The very first question for for you today is, what was the song, the track from your childhood that has influenced you the most? Influenced me the most. In I your mean, personal style and taste, yeah. Personal style and taste. Well, I don't know if it's style or taste, but certainly when I was about three or four years old <laughs> and my elder sisters were babysitting for me they used to put a single on of granada and this was on a dance set record player so we would go on repeat and repeat and repeat and apparently i used to be in the corner of the room dancing and i would dance for literally the entire evening to this one record <laughs> and things haven't changed that much. No, I was just about to say, that that kind of sums up the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, this, right? This was the beginning of the 60s, yeah. That's insane. So it was Granada. And I don't know if it was the fact that there was a lady in a big red frilly, frilly dress on the cover of the single, but, mm. I mean, I remember it, like... Today and there was a guy in very tight black trousers. <laughs> that's what you were drawn to. But you know, that's that's the magic of music, right? Yeah. The fact that from a really young age we, we're drawn. My mine was Crocodile Rock, right? By David, uh, by Elton John, and my mum. Right. I, I can remember to this day my mum taking it off of me and putting it in the top cupboard and shutting the door. And when because I played it over and over again. Let me ask you a question. So. Elton John, Crocodile yeah. Rock. So when you first met Elton, yeah. how was it for you? It was mind blowing. I was like, I was speechless because you know what, Elton's a phenomenon. He's yeah. not. He's not a human being. Yeah. He's like this celestial being. Mm-hmm. And you, when you first meet him, you're like, well, what do you say to Elton John? And I was like, all right, you can't. You know, they literally. And he was like, yeah, I'm all right. I've heard loads about you, yeah. and and that was it. There was. It wasn't. I didn't bow and curtsy or any of that. It was like, I, it, it was just the most funniest experience because he made me laugh. Well, a similar thing sort of happened to me. I, mean, I my, Even though we had Granada, my life was really changed by Roxy Music. And Amazing. I remember it was, a, I think it was at a, a Galliano show. Yeah. I met Brian Ferry. Oh, and really? I was introduced to him from Keith from Smile, who, who always I did I loved his, Keith from Smile. Let's so, talk about that. Yeah, go who on. Who had done it, always done his hair. And Keith said, because come, it, over, Keith, come, come over and meet Brian. And I was like, uh, another Brian Ferry. And then Brian said, oh, hi, you're Stephen, aren't you? And, uh, and Mind he blown. said, I really like your hats. And I was speechless. Of course. I could not say anything at all. So what year just, was that, roughly? A couple of years ago. No, yeah. It was, I don't know. Um, 20 years ago. Because Keith's another one of those miracles of World's End. Yeah. You know, Smile was in Knightsbridge originally and then moved down to World's End and yeah. he moved down there. Yeah, next Four to Four doors along yeah. from Vivian, right? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm surprised you didn't meet Brian Ferry before that. Yeah. On the King's I, Road and stuff because he was he was another... Because Anthony was at the end of King's Road. Price. Yeah, and I'd met Anthony. I'd yeah. met Anthony. And, uh, you know, I used to go into the Anthony Price shop down there. How and magical look at the, was that shop? And outside? look at the boards and the mirror changing room. And there was 
was no way I could afford anything. The only person I knew who had Anthony Price clothes was John Mabry. Uh, and they had, uh, they had a, he had a special cut on a pair of trousers that John Mabry wore. I didn't you know, ask what he so did. For anyone them, listening who doesn't know, do, please do Google Anthony Price because you know he's he's another one of the unsung heroes uh, of Thierry, fashion. Thierry Mugler said that Anthony Price was the only designer he respected. So Anthony Price did the first looks for all the Roxy Music album covers That's in right. Brian Perry, and I think still worked together too. So I met him, and I, I remember I was at boarding school in Liverpool, yeah. <laughs> and I remember seeing the album covers and thinking. In 1972, I bought them when they first came out. And as a 13 or 14-year-old, just thinking, oh, my God, people can look like that. Uh -huh. So that's why it's still an influence, because it's like, well, you know, you can do anything you want. I mean, David Bowie and Roxy Music were the two people who were really coming out at that time in the early yeah. 70s. And funnily enough, in my school, within our group of friends, you had to choose Either you're a Bay fan or you're a Roxy fan because you couldn't I like be both. <laughs> Did you ever make a hat for for Brian? Not personally, no, but I've had hats in his videos. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, whose video wouldn't you have had hats in? Come well, on, Stephen lots. Jones. Yeah. So uh, th I like this other track on here. Huckleberry Hound Goes to Memphis. Memphis. That Talk was the first that record I ever bought. That's the first record you ever bought. And actually, I've been trying to find it on the internet, and it's so bloody obscure. <laughs> There's not even a picture of it. But I do. I mean, I love Huckleberry Hound, and um, I still have my Huckleberry Hound spoon. Do you? Well, yeah, from when which you were I a forgot kid. to bring in today. Yeah, from oh, that's when I was amazing. A kid. For my breakfast cereal. I'm a yeah. big Snagglepuss fan. Right. I've got a tattoo of him on my arm, and I've just had a massive freeze done in my, on my bedroom wall of Snagglepuss. Oh. He's another one that people forget about. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, the, they were gay he unsung heroes. Do you know what I mean? They were like, really were gay heroes for me. Right. I, to, I think Snagglepuss was just like the first gay character I ever came across. I'm not sure that Huckleberry Hound was no, gay. Huckleberry Hound, I think he no. was a metrosexual, yeah, certainly. Yeah. I just think, you know, it's, it's funny how we, we zoom in on these characters because they are characters. Yeah, yeah. And then later in life, we become that character. Not, we, I'm not saying we become Huckleberry Hound, but we become characters within our own rights. Oh, well, you know, I used to listen to Thunderbirds and I uh, watched Thunderbirds and Stingray and Fabor XL5 and all those Jerry Anderson programs. Yeah, amazing. And when I grew up I wanted to be a puppet um, no, which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have strings in my head well I, actually maybe I do have strings we, in my head now well I wouldn't have I mean, at least you're not a glove puppet no <laughs> let's leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> okay a track from a film that's important to you so I mean it could be any of Fellini's films because I mean, I love Nina Rota. I love the way that they would even take, he would take songs, which were pop songs like Patricia, and then rewrite them for the films. But somehow there's a, a magic or something. Mm. To, but film music is, you know, whether it's Chariots of Fire or, or Vangelis or whatever, it's such an important part of what's going on, even if you're not aware of it. Uh -huh. um, I, Film music, I, 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 really the music from the Dolce Vita, because when you see Anita Eckbird, when you see those characters walking down the street and they've uh -huh. got that music pumping in the background, it's such an important part of it. But this, that's, but the, it's, it's like fashion, fashion shows. Oh, thank you. It's exactly it's like what fashion, I, was about to say. I always think the They're music the is almost thing. more important than the clothes. A hundred percent. And I'm really glad you said that because a lot of people don't get that. I mean, I think. I'm not sure if this is correct, but I think Jeremy Healy for John Galliano yeah. was the first person to do music when people were coming in, which would then pause and change to the music for the show. Yeah. So there was sort of a continuum. I don't know really if he was the first I person. I should know he wasn't because I, I used to do it for Catherine Hamlet and for back in the, right back in the day for Wendy Dagworthy and people like that when I used to do the music for their shows. And Actually, me and Michael Wendy, Roberts did that as well. <clears throat> talking about Wendy Dagworthy, yeah. as far as I know, she actually made the clothes for Anthony Price for the second act. Roxy Music album cover. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. so they were at the Royal College together. She, uh, you know, I, I, my history with Wendy Dagworth goes way, way back as well because, you know, she was one of these designers. All my friends work for her. Right. So I used to have this group of friends that lived in Bayswater and we all used to go around the houses and they all worked for Wendy Dagworthy. My friend Liz Flynn, uh, who went off to do Calvin Klein in America and Ralph Lauren, <laughs> all of that. They all worked for Wendy Dagworthy. So I used Amazing. to go in, and because I was a bigger girl then, mm -hmm. I, you know, I used to get Wendy Dagworthy clothes made especially for me because I was Amazing. Fatter. You must have been about 12 or something. Yes. 
<coughs> and, and Liz used to make them up from the same patterns wow. and, and stuff. And she'd go, don't come in because when do you see you wearing that? <laughs> and I used to always get caught. <laughs> and it was like I got Boy George into wearing Wendy Dagworthy, you know, like the pink coat that he wore, which uh, which quite, you know, I remember, and a tartan coat, and it was over in front of all the newspapers and, you know, because it was all about fashion yet again, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and, and music and fashion really are the same thing. Yeah, completely. And that's something which is unique about Britain as well. I mean, certainly in America, you could say, well, music and fashion go together a bit, or Italy, but it's really in Britain yeah. that that was formed. I mean, on the, I don't know, it's, especially when you look at that time of the 70s, late 60s, yeah. early 70s of Bowie and Roxy music. Yeah. That's really when it joined. And then you, it became tribal. And, you know, in previous generations it had been not wanting to be blasphemous, but about the church. Yes, of course. Or you joined a football club. Yeah. And um, we, the club we joined was fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And, cl- and club land and fashion world completely went together. All of those fashion greats now, when we look at it, all the leaders in fashion come from that background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know, um, and if they don't, they're, you know, they're not really doing it right. Do you get what I'm saying, Jay? I uh, A couple of years ago, I introduced a LGBTQ plus um, film festival in Austin in Texas, and I was doing an interview, and I was talking about club life. Yeah. And this young guy said to me after the Q&A, and he said, it's really weird. He said, you're really an authentic person. <laughs> I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, you know, because you've actually done something and you became well known for doing that. And and I said, well, you know, I come from really, I come from clubs. And he said, yeah, but nobody does anything like that now. Okay, right. Let's move on to what do you listen to day to day? What is it on in the background? I think I probably listen to the radio just yeah. because I like variety in things. It's eclectic, right? Yeah. So Radio 6, music, maybe, um, you know, have been known to listen to Gadio as well. <laughs> Of course you have. For my sins. <laughs> but do you ever get home and just think, okay, I really, there's one track I really want to put on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? I mean, it's different. Uh, it's, if you're uh, feeling really happy and uplifted and you walk in the door and think, oh, my God, today's been a but brilliant it's a day. Bit, a bit like I, either you want to compensate for the day that you've had. Yeah, so you've exactly. had a shit day, so you put on Delight. Yeah, which is all right. oh, it's always going to take you to that moment. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, I have to say... Disco can sort out a lot of the world's problems. It can. <laughs> it can. <laughs> if everybody so listens can. to disco every day, they just be in a good mood. Sometimes, because it really takes you, but sometimes because it's so ridiculous yeah. and stupid, and you know it's just like eating a bar of galaxy yeah. and as much depth as that. Three How seconds, fantastic it, is that? That's all we need. <laughs> Without the calories. <laughs> you know, it's like this morning I had one of those moments at home and I was like listening to Fast Love, George Michael, dancing around the bedroom with my dog. And it was like one of those moments where I just thought, this is life. This yeah. doesn't get better than this. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it just puts you into a frame mind of, of, of such a happy place. It's a safe thing. Music yeah. is always a safe bet. Yeah. I mean, it's so transporting to somewhere else as well. Funnily enough on the list, because I, I knew about vaguely what you were going to ask me. And it was... Moonlight Serenade by Glenn Miller. And I was in Maison Berto a few days ago Uh, having a cup of coffee. Oh, she's such an old school queen, Maison Berto. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, go on. I was sitting in Derek Jarman's chair. Yeah, uh, in Derek's. Bless Derek, yeah. And I was looking at all the Christmas decorations and saying to them, God, you've got to take this down. That's That's Maison Berto. They'll be up till March. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, exactly. That's what they said too. And then suddenly, this Glenn Miller track came on. Me. And, I, you know, this is my parents. This is my parents smooching in more time. And I was there and I hadn't heard that track in years. But that's the magic of music. It's like, it's like a time machine. You can close your eyes and you can go to that very point and yeah. that very moment with people that are no longer here, but they're there with yeah. you because that is, music is attached to that. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that you were in Maison Berto, which is a such a historical part of London. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know, it, it's not changed over no. the years. You know what you're going to get. Yeah. It's I mean, just, we, we used to be just around the corner because St. Martin's was in Charing Cross Of course Road. it was, yes. Uh, and, you know, if we really want to put the boat out and have an expensive cup of coffee and a piece of cake, we went to Maison Berta. Let's move on to what do you listen to when you're working, when you're creating? The thing is, when I'm working... They're two different uh, questions, actually. Working is like yeah. when you're working. Well, you know, I can either be doing drawing in 2D or making a twirl in 3D. I love listening to music when I'm working, but the problem I have a real problem with it because 
if I listen to something Spanish music, you know, suddenly everything <laughs> will get carnations on it. You know, if I'm listening to industrial techno, suddenly everything's in silver and it's all really straight lines. So the, the music takes me completely. When you're um, working with like a fashion house like Dior or, or working with, or with, with a master like Kim or John, for instance, and you're you're there at Dior and they're playing their music, does it ever irritate you? <laughs> well, sometimes I can't hear. <laughs> Yeah, of course, especially with Kim, right? But especially with Kim. But now I love it. Okay, I mean, cool. quite often under the table, I've got my, my phone and I'm shazamming it because it's a fantastic old track that Kim is playing for me yeah, as yeah, a yeah. present, which yeah. is, but actually, I can't remember the name of it. So I'm shazamming it underneath the table. That's the that's but that's the the beauty of Kim Jones as well and do and why are these brands as you know the masters John G and Kim and this you know Vivian and all of these people they understood music they understand they understand it's not about just fashion they understand that music is fashion yeah as well you know it's it's really important I mean with Vivian you know when you think about punk and all of that, were those shops more about clothes or more about music? I couldn't tell you. No. When you think about the creat- the original creative team at, at Galliano, uh, Jeremy Healy was as important as the pattern cutter or the colour that was going to be done. Stephen, yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. all and as Michelle important. And Michelle Gobert nowadays. Look at it, Michelle. I mean, such so important with so many different designers. I, I want mean, to get Michelle to come and do this, actually, yeah. because um, yeah, I think it's a very important part of, of fashion. Yeah. Very, very important and part of And he started up, off as a DJ in the Palace in 1979. So he's insane, been... insane, right? Yeah, insane. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to, what do you listen to when you're creating? So when 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 I'm creating, so that's the thing about music and if I'm going to listen to something. But even though if it's something, often what I will do is when I'm drawing initially, I won't be listening to music because, as yeah. I said, it makes me... Distraction, di- right? Distraction. But when I'm editing, yes. So say, for example, for this summer's collection, we're, we're coming into summer 23, it was based on this sort of, trip to Morocco, whether it was Morocco the place or El Morocco the nightclub in the 1940s in New York. It was the two things mixed together. So I just thought, well, I need some entertainment while I'm looking at all these drawings, these drawings that I did. So I just looked up and El Morocco, and it's an album by the Aqua Velvets. And I put that on and thought, why not? And it was happy, jolly music. And Uh, isn't it mad how things connect? Yeah. And it's just weird. But yeah, music... Is such a part of my life. Really. Mm. I can't yeah. imagine it without it. You know, I, I was watching the other day. I was watching the Dior um, film about you, you're, you're, you creating that the, 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 the boater hats, which is the wrong name for them because yeah. I'm just a, you know a philistine. Yeah, yeah. It's it fine, to, but you know the, 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 the whole process of. Those be- the beautiful process of those hats, of you finding out the history of it. Well, it's Go so back. funny because, okay, it wasn't Granada. I went to Seville. Yeah. But suddenly it's all women in flamenco dresses. <laughs> <laughs> but <it> was, <laughs> talk it, about it, life it, repeating itself. It was incredible. But it came full circle. Yeah, I mean. I was captivated by it. Yeah, I'm very lucky that I found the thing that... I love to do, or the thing that I love to do. Family. You know, there's such. But, but the thing about you, Stephen, is there's such an elegance with everything that you do. You, you know, you, you, you. When you talk about Stephen Jones, you can't talk about it, but talk about it in, in an eloquent way. Uh, and that's a, that's, that's a fact because everything that you do is so beautifully orchestrated. I don't, and, and it's you know it's different for me. I didn't want to change the world with a hat. No, right? I really didn't. You know, it's really important to me and the ideas behind it and the fact that I've been able to make a business from it and continue with it. But it is just a hat. And I feel lucky every day. And it's sort of slightly, I I don't, if you're a fashion designer, you have to be on a mission Mm. to change the world. Yeah. Because if you if you're not you're not going to succeed. I was never I never really wanted to change the world with a hat. But I, <laughs> I think, just wanted I wanted to be go onto a dance floor with it, and I wanted to be in a nightclub and dance to. I think that the, the the beauty of it is the fact that you didn't try to change the world with with a hat, but yeah. the people that are changing the world wear your hat. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the magic. Yeah, right? and, and actually, a lot of people 
from our media and yeah, it did. Yeah, the they perhaps. did. Yeah. They really did, and yeah. and 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 that's why you're like this reinforced uh, power behind it all. But you know, I can't like, believe listen, that I'm, you know, I'm 66 this year, and I'm still insane. doing it. It's so br- it's so magical. But you're not just doing it. Yeah, that's just it. Hang on, no, no, no. That's kind of like <laughs> under washing. I'm still doing it. No, you're not still doing it. You are. You're bigger than that. Mm-hmm. You you know there are when you you know for instance Kim taking you out on the catwalk. And say no, this you're coming with me, because you're the biggest part of Dior. You know, you are Dior along with Kim and and all of these brands that you've worked with over the years. Yeah, really, you know, a lot of the collections have been based based on one of those hats. Do you get it, what I mean? It, it was so funny how that all happened because you know Kim loves collaborating with people yeah. every season, and we were talking beforehand, and he collaborated with so many different artists or or, or creatives. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, your ultimate collaboration was with Monsieur Dior. Mm. And that's why, partially, that's why that collection looked like that. But I had no idea I was going to get... I love that get, collection. I, I had no idea that I was going to be taken out. And Kim said, oh, well, stay with me just backstage. They all knew this. <laughs> I was just you. panicking, hoping the bloody hats wouldn't fall off. And th- then it came to the end and he said, you're coming out with me. And I said, what to do? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you dear, you've been here 25 years, Hello, quarter right? of a century. This is a celebration. Years. It's yeah. insane. You know, those little Dior berets, the leopard skin beret, all of that stuff, just like mind-blowingly beautiful. Mm-hmm. For me, I did fashion at college. Yeah. So I always think about it as in combination. So, you know, that, and for example, that was the genius of John. Yeah. Because <laughs> always it should be, how does the hat balance the makeup, balance the hair, balance the clothes and balance the shoes? So it's all part of the same thing. So really you're working, when I was working with John, your work, of course, he is driving it, but you're working as part of a team. And I quite enjoy, what, even though I have my own company and everything, yeah. I enjoy working part of a team. Yeah. I know what I think looks beautiful or ugly. And it's great to work with somebody who you respect because every season they'll challenge that. They'll say, no, we don't like that. Or we do like that. Or yeah. this is what I think is beautiful this season. And if you trust them and believe them, you just have to give your heart to them and they'll take you to a place that you don't know about. I, I, I see new talent, not as a, a threat, but as, as an, a magical thing because those kids will take me to places and, and you know, I have people that source music for me and they send me this stuff and I'm like, oh, wow, I would never have gone there. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. never have listened to that. Yeah, because I'm so like you know, uh, you know, my mind. I don't have the, the mental capacity because my ADHD. I'm all over the shop, but constantly. Yeah. So when someone brings this stuff to me, and it's always the young kids. It's always I push those kids forward. I'm never afraid of giving someone else work. I'm mm. never afraid of listening to someone yeah, else yeah. when it comes yeah. to that. You know, don't get me wrong. I will challenge them, and they will challenge me. But you know, that's that's how it works. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. you know, because if I was truly to believe that I knew better than everyone. My career would have been over a very long time ago. Yeah, yeah, Because also, so much music is being created all over the world now. It's just, it's insane. And And it's not as though that, I mean, 20 years ago, it would have been coming from, like, the 10 big record labels. Yeah, that's it. Now, everybody. Because everyone can just do it and put it out on their phone. Yeah. And then he suddenly gets picked up. You know, there's so so many, it's like, when people say to you, oh, what type of music do you listen to? Like, someone asked you earlier, like, we talked about. And for me, I always go, you know, uh... They ask me what I play, what type of music you play. I'm like, come and listen, come and hear me play, and then you'll understand what I play. Don't ask me to describe what I play mm-hmm. because I, I I can't describe it because I can. I, I, when I'm not one, I'm my job is to make people dance regardless of they're 40 years old, 20 year olds, whatever. It's make to read that energy on that dance floor yeah. and make them dance. Yeah, so yeah. I cannot tell you what I'm going to play that night. Yeah, yeah. Until you I have meet I, them. So it is exactly the same as what I do because you're doing you do yes you do your thing. Yeah. But the most important thing is how you react to what's going on exactly and how far you're going to push it as well yeah and it's like diana freeland said uh give them give people what they didn't know they wanted to have 
And it's exactly that. So I, I'm sure you can read an audience and read people and say, okay, well, I'm going to put this on because I can take them that far. And then you see maybe that was too far. So then, then you take back. it back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the beauty of what I do for a living. And that's my job is to read a crowd. I'm, I My job is to make people dance, regardless if I played that track three times before that night. <laughs> When it's the moment and it comes into my mind, I think, okay, this is the right time for that. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. I will push people sometimes. And, you know, there's been moments in my career where people are going, what the fuck is he doing? And then three months later, they're all doing it. Okay, what song best represents the sound of your studio? The sound of Stephen Jones. I don't, it's funny. Um, there's, al there's always radios on. <laughs> yeah. But I think sound of it is Britney Spears. I love the fact yeah. that you said that. Do, do lots of people say Britney? No, you know what? You're the first Britney. -er. You're oh. the first. You're the the first one that's brought Britney to this table. A lot. We have a lot of Gaga. Well, I've worked no a lot one, with Gaga. Yeah, but I've of never course. worked with Britney. Yeah, so. oh. she's your yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's your yet. Yeah, I've got. I've even got a T-shirt when she first became well known. I've got a T-shirt. Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen her live? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, I, I love the fact that you said that. that you love that, and and also you went on to say that. Uh, endure. It's not a lot of Justin Timberlake. Yes, because yes, they do listen to music sometimes in the atelier. But um, I mean, this is. Do you, I was thinking about Dior Women. Yeah, of course, which yeah, is yeah. totally really yeah. tends to be sort of in silence. Yeah. When John when John was there, we played music as well. Yeah. I mean, I'd say if we're working with Kim, yes, it's, it's certainly not, I don't know, it could be Justin Timberlake. In fact, we, he was wearing a Dior hat, made him a cap last season. He, Justin Timberlake came in and uh, we tried different things on. He's a great hat wearer. In yeah, he looks there. fucking amazing at yeah. hat. Yeah, and, but Kim puts things on and puts things on for me. Yeah, I mean, a million different records. Lots of, like, 90s house music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you, you know, you all, wrong, all, 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 that, all that stuff. What's, but, in, in fact, interestingly enough, that many years ago when I first went to Dior, Jeremy Healy, you know, was doing the music. Yeah. Thing, and they tried to put out CDs with the tracks that he was doing and the yeah. way that you could put out playlist now. But in fact, it never happened. Sidney Toledano and, and Jeremy you know, wanted mean, to do it, but it was just too complicated with all the copyright things. Yeah, of course it is. And, I, and you know, let's go back to, you know... We've, you've mentioned Jeremy a lot because Jeremy is a, a, it's just such an, a, 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 an incredible creative when it comes to music. Okay, let's move on. Most important, uh, this is one of my favourite questions, right? Most important song you've heard for a catwalk show? It has to be Fashioned by David Bowie no, because can't. nobody ever uses it, but people always think we probably should do, but... No, they, they I've never heard any show ever. No, 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 because everybody think, oh, it'd be Nafa's Knickers. Actually, it wouldn't be. It'd be, be great. There's something, there's nothing naff about that track. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 like the, it, you know what it is? It's got the taint of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain tr tracks that you, 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 when you're a DJ, you don't go to. And I, I've always gone to them, like Show Me Love. And like, they're the ones that you go, yeah, yeah. oh my God, he's playing Alison Limerick again. You know, they're the magical tracks. Yeah, they're yeah. the ones that we all want to hear, but pretend we don't. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, it's like Freed From Desire. And, and you know, Fashion is one of those tracks. It's such a genius track yeah. that people are scared of. Yeah. And it's so identifiable as mm. well. I mean, just the... Maybe it's just me and my age, but the three opening bars, and you know what it you is. You know exactly what it is, but also those three opening bars will make every hair stand on oh, your, God, on your yeah. arm, right? Yeah. yeah. That's that's the magic, right? Okay, we need to speak to Kim. It's <laughs> got to be all the way. For, the next show has to be yeah, fashion. Fashion. Okay, right. Also, moving on to the best music video. Now, your answers to this is like heaven for me. Right. Right. You know, the best music, fashion music video. Well, it's a bit difficult for me to choose, really, because, of course, I grew up with MTV and the MTV generation. I remember there was an interview with Anthony Price, funnily enough, and it, Steve Strange and Anthony Price talking with each other. And this was actually in the back of Tatler magazine. By Miles <laughs> Chapman. In the day, that was like the, the only permissible magazine, apart from the Blitz and, yeah, that's right, and, yeah. and all of those. And uh, Anthony said... No, Steve said that suit, that outfit fits me really perfectly. It'll look great on camera. And then Anthony says, that's all that's important in our world. <laughs> <laughs> so 
vi a visual repre representation of music is something that really I grew up with. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, I would have to say that the first track I think of when I think of that is Fade to Grey by Visage. Um, the other one, I mean, being a fashion person, is um, Freedom by George Michael. With, the the show, with Linda, with Naomi, with Christy, with Emma. It doesn't get better than that. I'm I mean, sorry, it's it doesn't. extraordinary. You know, it's such a time. I love that track more than anything, more relevant today than it's ever been. Hopefully. That video was such a, a unique <laughs> masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. A beautiful thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, um, what is fantastic that George actually commissioned that. Yeah. And it happened forevermore. That will be one of the most extraordinary music. Paid for himself, bit. didn't no record of the company paid for it or anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, extraordinary. And that Thierry was into it. I mean, I know it was not easy on the shoot date at all. Of course. With all those girls. Um, and with Thierry and with George and who Blah, but the end result was extraordinary. Well, you know, we had we had that, and then we after that, where do you go from that? And then they went on to too funky. Yeah. Oh uh, my I god! Mean, yeah. When you think you can't top something, right? And then suddenly it's like, yeah. what? You got Linda walking down and Tiara Mugler down the catwalk. Yeah. It's like, my, you're just yeah. like, where yeah. does this yeah. go? Yeah. It's like yeah. it's insane. Yeah. Okay, a song from a musician you'd wish to work with. I oh. mean, so many, so many, but I'd have to say Billie Holiday. Mm, I love this. Because, I mean, how she looked was extraordinary. And she, yeah, she wore hats during the day, but normally she was performing wearing an evening dress. So she always put gardenias in her. Yeah. And in almost every collection I've ever done, yeah. there's a flower, I've noticed, something, gardenias but that, but in But that's what's hair. so Stephen Jones about it. It's like, I do, when I read that, and I said this to you before we started this podcast, was of all the people that you would think would be Stephen Jones, it would be Billie Holiday. Yeah. Because of that flower and where it was placed and how beautiful she looked. And it was so simple. It was just a flower that she bought in a shop and pinned it in her hair and looked beautiful in her hair. And the scent is extraordinary. For example, I'm working on um, my next collection at the moment. And yeah. we've done orchids this time. And they're orchids made out of felt in olive green. Oh, amazing. And then shaded with pastel. We, we take art pastels and shade the felt in pink. So that's sort of my Stunning. homage to, to her this time. And, I mean, trying to choose a track from her is impossible. Yeah. Okay. So earlier on, you were telling me about the Billie Holiday, how were you, where you used to have to go to get the tracks. Yeah, I remember... I don't know, it must have been 1980. I'd Kim Berner told me about this singer called Billie Holiday from the 20s and 30s, or she had a record. I don't know how it happened. But anyway, the only place we could find out about it was the Notting Hill Gate Record and Tape Exchange because they sold vintage records. Yeah. And we had to go and look, and we looked through hundreds of records, and we found 78s of Billie Holiday because this was before CDs, before all that yeah. stuff was reissued. At that time, all you could buy, is, say, for example, if you went to a record store, you would buy things which were current. Yeah, you could maybe, only buy what was in the charts. Yeah, yeah like, you could only buy what was in the charts. Yeah. Or maybe a few years beforehand, you know, if it was the, the Beatles or the Stones, yeah, they might course. have two or three albums back. They certainly wouldn't have the early albums. Yeah. They didn't keep it. No. It was all about the now. Yeah. It was about what was number Outpriced one. Outpriced records. Yeah. You know. So heard, I remember putting this record on and it was really scratched and her voice filled the room we all lived in a squat in warren street and it was in lee sheldrick's bedroom not kimbo and Sheldrick. and john mabry was there and marilyn was there and we were just all round in a circle listening to this old 78 of billy holiday and i think it was strange fruit amazing um we were all crying amazing what a beautiful story it, i mean yeah i mean it's extraordinary how and then of course there was the film of Lady Sings the Blues starring, starring Diana Ross, and yeah. she played, it was a biopic, um, and that was great. And um, Do you yeah. think that the reason Billie Holiday stuck with you all this time is because of that, that, that very first meeting, as in getting those 78s and the magic of that? Of this yes, I, th I think she has to, because there's other singers, you know, like yeah, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, you know, all of those. Sarah Vaughan, who I was listening to last night, oh, my God. She's such a good singer. Mm. That mass power and delicacy within her voice is something that I don't know of anyone else, any contemporary singer. 
whether they're opera singer or, or it's, it's it's mad, isn't it? When we 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 forget about people, and then we we think, oh my god, I'm going to put that on and you play it, and yeah. you just like my your mind goes, you just think, oh yeah. my god, why is this not in my life all the time? Yeah. Okay, track ten, right? This mm-hmm. is a that represents how you feel about life now. <laughs> this very second, I'm in love, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> um, about life now, I don't know. I Where you're I, at. I, I can't really answer that seriously and yeah as well as being making happy optimistic hats there is the dark side so i'd the, have listen, to, there would not be magic without the dark yeah side. you have to have a balance between the two things so um is that all there is yeah not by peggy lee even though the peggy lee version is extraordinary but this is the 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 new wave version by yeah, christina Christina's amazing yeah and I saw my house burn down. Is that all there is? Um, Incredible, right? Is that all there is to a disco? <laughs> is that all there is? It, <clears throat> it's just great. Really good. People always ask me, why are you so funny? And I'm like, I'm, I, I've had a life of trauma. That's why I can laugh. That's yeah. what makes, you know, because, you know, without that darkness, we wouldn't be who we are yeah, today. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's how we, we, if we allow it to drag us down with it. We don't. We yeah. just keep moving on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We need sweet, sweet and sour. But so I love. Need, I mean, uh, Christina's such a great artist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly that that particular time with Christina and Lime and all those early eighties amazing band. I mean, I don't want to be defined by that particular time because also as well, I love. Actually, the interesting thing about music now and how it was then. Then music was very much determined by time and yeah. it's like what's number one this week yeah. you know, where it's going in the charts um i mean i remember being with kylie once when she found out she was number one there were only two people in the room and it you know that you had to phone up and they were counting That's, up yeah yeah, you know, yeah what was five four three two one and she'd sold like triple the number two and However, now I feel that music can be plucked out from anywhere. Mm-hmm. It, music is timeless. You know, there's a, you know, there's a million and one charts these days. You know, it, it doesn't. You don't listen to the radio with your tape recorder taping it on a Sunday afternoon anymore. Yeah, and, and waiting for them to stop speaking so you could press play yeah, yeah, just yeah. to get the tracks. You know, it's there. It's everywhere. And and the thing about it is, you know. Uh, Yes, it's important to be number one, but I couldn't tell you who was number one right now. Mm-hmm. I could not tell you what the top ten is, yeah, because yeah. it's irrelevant. Yeah, what I know is what my top ten is, and mm-hmm. I think that's most people yeah. today. That's why music sales mm-hmm. is very different today. Mm-hmm. And as an art, being an artist and being in that industry, it, it, it's such a varied thing from what it used to be. You mm-hmm. know, I probably do. Do artists still get gold discs? Do they still get platinums? Or I, I know a lot of them get like metal trophies saying number one on it. But you know, it's 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 remarkable about how much it's shifted and 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 you know it's it's like fashion as well it's like those tribes that no longer exist but those tribes are now such vast communities yeah that yeah. they're not little small pockets where people used to take photos of mm-hmm. they're mass communities you know yeah. whether it be people that wear gucci or wear dior or, or wear vivian or wear balenciaga they're all a part of that tribe but it's just much more diluted yeah yeah you know you don't see them and think oh my god wow let me take let me take a picture of them because it that's not what fashion is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely. You know, if you see someone walking down the road in a full Kim Jones look from the catwalk, that's a different story. Here we are. Or, yeah, <laughs> or a Vivian outfit. Do you get what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, completely. You know, um, and, 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 and you know, that's the difference with it. It's the same with music. Do you know what I mean? Yes, people strive to be the top of their game. But for a lot of people, it isn't important to be number one. It's important to get that, that song I heard right. more so than being played on Radio 1 because people don't, cool people don't listen to Radio 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, God, listen. I don't know. But be, I mean, I, is, it, is what do you, listening we, to the radio a rite of passage? Which then? radio would you listen to? BBC Radio 6 Music. I well, you know, I, I once said in a quote that... You, if, or, you, or ra- I mean, Radio 4. But you'll never ever be lonely if you listen to Magic FM. Yeah. And that's the truth, because it, how can you ever be alone when you listen to a radio station that plays magical hits from all eras? It, actually, it was funny, because a couple of days ago, I think... 
I don't know, I was at a bus stop or going past a big sign, and it ma- said Magic FM, and it said the hits you, underneath it said the hits you love. And it's true. And I thought that was such a good tagline. Because it hits, or no, it was the music you love. love. Yeah, and it is. You know, and it is. Like, oh my god, I haven't heard this in years. And, and, and is it for music you love for every generation? Yeah, it is for every generation. Yeah, it's not like you know, it's not, it's not boxed itself. And I and, and I truly believe that you know that in the background, you, wherever you're doing, if you've got that going on in the background, because it's not fucking crashing beats, it's not like dance music. Yeah, it's. Songs that you like, your mum and dad used to play. It's songs that your your kids play. It's songs of everything. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's the music that just like it just takes you right. Like, and I'm just blessed that you've come in today. I really am, and that you're. This this has been one of my favourites. So glad I don't have favourites. Thank you. But this has been one of my favourites. And you know, Stephen, just to spend time with you in this little show studio booth has been remarkable. In the way that we never do. No. Because as I said at the beginning, we always see each other. You know, in a club or in a party. Yeah. And at work. At work. Yeah. Uh, and when we're doing our thing. But, you know, I love seeing you do you. I love listening to you doing your thing. Mm-hmm. And you know how you were talking about reacting to the crowd? I love trying to understand what you're doing. Uh, but actually, what you're doing is, most of the time is really subtle. Thank you. So it's sort of seamless. So you don't really know what's going on. But I know I'm being manipulated. Oh, you're very much so. You know what a manipulating <laughs> bitch I am. I know. <laughs> you know uh, thank, you, I <laughs> thank you so much. Oh. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for coming in. Long may you reign. I say that to all of our guests because everyone we have on here is is always reigning in one way or another. And I don't mean on someone else's parade. I mean, yeah. uh, ruling. Thank you, Stephen Jones. Thank you, Tony.